Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Headed Home Podcast. We're your hosts, Jen and Andrew, and we seriously have the coolest excited, interview today. Excited, excited, super excited. Yes, yeah, super excited. We have a special guest who is like a legit powerhouse in the real estate industry, Jimmy Burgess. How to, how'd I do on that last name, Jimmy? Yeah, that was killer. That was that amazing. Was, that was yeah. fancy, right? Yes. Is the is the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Beach Properties of Florida. And they are a company that boasts an impressive 280 agents and over $2.1 billion in sales in 2021, which is insane. Not only that, but Jimmy has also established himself as an authority in the industry with over 11,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. Um, just mentioned 600,000 views, I believe, on all of his videos and is a host of the Real Estate Sales Podcast. His expertise has been recognized by Inman News, where he was recognized as the most read contributing author in 2022 and is considered one of the 200 most influential and powerful people in the real estate industry. His passion is to help agents build their business through education and business strategy, and we are super excited to have him share his insights with us today. Welcome, Jimmy, to the show. Jen, Jen I'm looking over my shoulder trying to figure out who this is you're talking about. That was, <laughs> uh, thank you. It's the guy I in the green know. shirt, Jimmy. That, that really green shirt. That's exactly right. No, no. I'm so excited to be with you guys. I mean, hey, this is what my passion is, because what we're going to do over the next little bit is we're going to give some agents some ideas on some things that can absolutely help their business, help them be more efficient, help them grow their business and serve their clients better. So thanks for having me, guys. This is going to be fun. We love that. No, and, and we're excited, too. And you know, Jimmy, you have some amazing stuff on YouTube and I'm a YouTube junkie. She, she Accurate. you know, busts me up about that all the time. I'm always on YouTube. And so I watch a lot of videos and your content is it's extremely dialed in. It's easy to digest. And just the tips and strategies that you uh, provide for real estate agents is really huge. So, you know, we have a lot of realtors listening to this. I, I really want to urge you guys to go check out Jimmy's channel. There's some really good stuff on there. And how I found you was through YouTube. One of the videos that I watched, um, it was a video about chat GPT and how real estate agents can use that to um, help build their business. So I think that's a good place to start. Um, if you could just give us a little bit of background, a lot of people still don't know what chat GPT even is. So um, what is chat GPT? Yeah, so ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence um, that is different than anything we had had before. They started in November. Uh, this is something that I happened to have somebody share with me in like the first week they were there. Um, and we've been hearing about artificial intelligence and what it could do for a long time. But what this is, is this is more conversational. So this is literally like if someone were asking me and I were giving a response. It's, it, it comes back in a way that's easily readable. Um, the difference between like a Google search where they're going to go and just try to find other articles on it is they're going to actually put this together and answer you like they're sitting in front of you. And it's extremely accurate. I mean, it is amazing what it can do. And we're going to talk about some of the applications you can do, but especially for real estate um, agents, this is something that literally can change uh, the efficiency of your business very, very quickly. And some of these tasks that we've done in the past, even some of the roles we've had in the past can be replaced by uh, this artificial intelligence known as chat GPT. It's, I mean, it's insane. Like we've been kind of messing around with it for about a month and a half now, maybe two months. I use it all the time. And yeah. we always joke, I think on Valentine's day, he walked <laughs> downstairs and uh, I was typing in chat GPT, like write a Valentine for my husband. Um, for, for <laughs> It was so romantic. <laughs> I know. That's right. <laughs> I was going to say. Ever um, the romantic. That's yeah, right. Right? yeah, I know. So sweet always. <laughs> um, but I think, I think, you know, we keep getting into it and realizing like this, I mean, this can transform so many pieces of your business in multiple ways. So I'd love to start there with you. What are, you know, what are some of those like big buckets um, that you are working with agents on and how they can implement chat GPT in those areas? And then we can kind of yeah. get into some specifics in each of those. Yeah. And, and Jen, let me say this. If he had not seen you do this, this is the crazy thing. If he had not seen you typing that in and you had given it to him, he would have thought it was the greatest <laughs> Valentine um, that you had ever given him. That's what's Best amazing about letter. this. Is, I'll be, listen, I'll be crazy. You know, here next year. I, I write every week for Inman. You know what I mean? And, and I've yeah. always written 
all my own stuff, especially so I was the agent when I was an agent that I really wanted to write the, the description in a way that helped me sell the house. You know, the MLS description, mm -hmm. for instance. Well, now um, I, I, I put some of these up against mine and just tested it where I'd written some in the past and didn't just ask it to, I would just go in there and I type in and listen, you ask it to give you whatever it is that you want. And first off, if no one is, if, if you haven't signed up yet, uh, you just go on, you set up a free account now. Um, I don't expect that to be that way forever, uh, but you have a free account now. They are overwhelmed with the numbers, so you may have to try to log in a number of different times before you get in, but once you do, um, take advantage of it. Uh, and so I'm going to use this as on the MLS description. So simply going in and typing in, um, provide me a legal or a, a MLS description for, and you give the house some of the details, like you know anything that you would want to include, like the number of bedrooms and baths, where it's located, um, maybe some of the amenities, what it's close to. And then you just say, give me an MLS description for that. And it just starts typing this thing out. And it's the, it's the best, easiest read and best MLS description you've ever seen in your life. Then if it comes back and you're like, you know what? This is actually a luxury listing. And you just go down right below where it did said, add, uh, make this more luxury buyer driven or ask, make this more luxury focused. It rewrites the thing with luxury focus. You can ask it to make this funnier. It will make it funny. You can Sounds ask true. it to make it shorter, make it longer. You can ask it to write it in a Southern accent like mine, and it will start <laughs> using y'all. I mean, it's, it's incredible what it does. But the bottom line is, is the things that agents like that, I used to spend, because, and, I, and I, would, I would almost brag about it. You know what I mean? I'd be like, yeah. I spent four hours writing the greatest <laughs> MLS description ever. And now... You can literally type it in, and like that, you've got the greatest uh, MLS description ever. And I got four hours back. So this is one of those where you can absolutely use it. This is where I would absolutely start. And let me just say this. Go in with the ones that you have already written and, and just input it in there and say, rewrite this uh, MLS description, and, and then just put it in this, copy it in there, and watch how much better it gets. Um, we've mm -hmm. done, been doing that with agents where we'll just take it and we're just – every single description they've got, we're asking them. You know, listings need a refresh sometimes. They're staying on the market a little longer right now. This is a great way to go in and refresh your listing on the MLS that gives you that new start on it. And really it kind of freshens up that, that pitch that you're doing, so to speak with that MLS description. That's one of the yeah. keys I would say. Um, to Game start changer right there. And I think like, I think for us, you know, one of the things that we are, you know, spend a lot of time, the irony of this, the, a lot of time on is around like, how can we improve our time management and productivity um, and so we're always looking for things like to get more time back. Right. Cause we know that that's the, one of the most important things that we can do in our business and in our life is, you know, spend right. our time better. Yeah. And I think that's why we look at this and have just been like, this is crazy. The different levels that you can really take that in your business. Tell me this too, because you're very consistent on social media uh, and, um, it's so important in this day and age to have a, a social footprint and to have a presence on social media as a sales professional in any field, especially as a realtor or a lender. Um, from a social media standpoint, and creating content, I mean, that's a tough thing for a lot of people that are mm -hmm. busy. How can ChatGPT help with you know, creation of content? This is one of the best ways. Uh, literally, you could go in right now and say, uh, give me 10 Instagram post ideas for a realtor in Denver, Colorado. And it will, it's going to just spit them out for you. Spit them out. Uh, with those ideas. Then you say, okay, I like that one. Um, uh, write an Instagram real script in, for Denver, Colorado on and whatever subject it just gave you. And it's going to give you the script. Um, it, it just does it all for you. Now, um, it also gives you the ability, you know, you want to do some social media that's really helps right now. Go in there right now and say, with interest rates moving up quickly, what are uh, five, what are the, you know, how, how should, I'm, I'm going to figure out how to phrase this. This is the way I was doing it before. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to rephrase it right now, but um, yeah. go in and just simply ask it, say, with interest rates rising, give me a blog post that explains why now is a good time to buy. Um, give me, um, uh, answer the question of why now is a great time to buy a home despite higher interest rates. And it's yeah. going to give you the ideas when it gives you that blog post. Then you come back and you say, shorten that into an Instagram reel 
or TikTok script. And it will yeah. absolutely do it. So whatever it is that you're facing right now, what you're trying to overcome, you know, uh, you could simply go in there and say, give me five reasons now is the best time ever for a first time home buyer to buy a house. Um, or, you know, why not, why in buying an investment property right now makes the most sense? Um, six reasons why you should sell your home in the spring. I mean, you know, any of these things that you want to do for content and literally like we're only, we're talking about this. You can do it in a blog post. I mean, listen, don't mm -hmm. sleep on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. Now you've got the ability to literally put LinkedIn content that is killer together just as quick as you want to. Um, I would suggest to agents to do this. Think of the questions that people have asked you that you didn't have the perfect answer for, or you were like, hmm, I wish yeah. I would have answered that better. Go ask that to chat GPT. Take that answer, learn that, put it in your own words. You know, obviously, you know, different areas will do different things. It will sound different if I say it than you do, but put it in your own words, but you will have the answers in a way that I promise is going to help you serve your clients better, um, especially going forward. That is so huge. I, and I've done that too. You know, I've had clients ask me certain questions that I'm used to answering, you know, just typing out the answer to, and this is just, these are just one-offs, but I mean, just even that too, if you get a question and you don't want to take the time to, you know, write the whole explanation out, ask chat GPT, it's going to put it in an easy, uh, easy to follow format. You can copy, you can paste it right into an email or a text. Really, really powerful stuff. Hey, um, let me let me mention this too, if you don't mind, real quick, Jen. I'm sorry. I just, yeah, no, I you're good. take it, and I just went on. But let me let me say this. Another one that you know, especially now as we're shifting over with more listings being taken, uh, you're needing to sell those listings. Uh, going in and saying, "Give me 25 unique ways to market a listing that's been on the market for 60 days." I mean, the ideas are not. I mean, it's it's crazy. Or you're going into a listing appointment. Give me 20 ways to market a listing when it first comes on the market as a realtor in Denver, Colorado. And it's mm -hmm. going to spit these things out. Now, listen, they may not all be exactly what you're going to do, but you could mm -hmm. literally take that, put it in a sheet. Hello, Mr. Miss Seller. I just want to show you what I'm going to do to market your house. And it literally took seconds um, to yeah. do that. And most of it you're going to do anyway. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some of it, some of it may be new ideas, uh, but it's a way to literally it is your creative director now. It is your uh, it, it is the it is your copywriter. It can be handle a lot of those things that we've had people do in the past in seconds and do it better than any individual could possibly do those things. The problem is with most of us as agents is, is we want to do everything ourselves. We want to figure it out. Well, listen, that single agent out there that's watching this that is so such a control freak, and I'm speaking because I'm talking to myself right now. This gives us the ability to continue to be somewhat of a control freak, but do it a lot faster. So now all of a sudden, if you're utilizing this and you see these tasks that you can utilize this in, you gain five to six hours per week like that, that you can then spend time prospecting, adding value to your past clients. And there's no way that if you do that and you refocus that time, that you're not going to see your business grow. I It reminds me of, um, is it Stephen Covey's like, quadrants, you know, yeah. quadrants of, yes. of work. Yeah. And, you know, <clears throat> as an agent or in any business, I'm assuming you want to spend as much time in quadrant two, like creating and developing and implementing. And I think what is so great about chat GPT is it gets you out of these like details that sometimes we all get like stuck in that take the most amount of our time. And it's like, great, here's this thing. Now I can actually spend all of my time prospecting with this or implementing it when a lot of times agents are going to get stuck because they run out of time just from creating all of these social media posts. And actually like, that's not what you want to spend your time on. You want to spend your time reaching out to people and, and making those connections and not, you know, getting stuck in those social media creations. Absolutely. Yeah. Th this is the biggest thing is that is the time. It's not even the time that it takes to do it. It's the time that it takes for you to creatively begin to get in that process, yes. right. then to get it yep. done, then to edit it, and then to actually, you know, take care of doing it. So this takes a lot of the stuff where people get stuck. You know what I mean? Yep. That writer's block yep. is a real thing or idea block is a real thing. I've yep. used it for me where I would just go in there and I would say, okay, I'm trying to think about what am I going to do this? I mean, I've done 350 videos. What am I going to talk about this different? You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. you punch in there and say, give me three video content ideas to help real estate agents grow their business. And it just gives me a cue. I don't even typically mm -hmm. use it, but what it does is, is it takes me down a path where I can find something that I would use, you know? So it yeah. just unclogs and begins to let the flow of that creativity come for me in a lot of cases as well. 
Yeah. It frees up that mental bandwidth. You yeah. know, we've talked a lot about that. Yeah. Um, have you for your own, you know, in your own work or with agents that you help support, have you talked to them or worked with them around um using it to create like templates or systems and structures? Absolutely. Um in email, anything like that, that you've really seen some success with? Yes. Um, typically what we did and listen, some, some of these are going to be different for every place. Even if I was, mine would be different than an agent in Denver. You know what I mean? But yep. what we've done is use it as almost to give us bumpers, so to speak, as far as, okay, mm -hmm. this is a format. Now let's adjust and add and take away some of the things. So for instance, you know, um, checklist for real estate agents, once a buyer goes under contract in Denver, Colorado, um, mm. checklist for marketing activities for a new listing for a realtor in Denver, Colorado. You see what I mean? So listen, may not be perfect, but what it does is going to give you 10 or 12 of those that are, and then you're going to be like, Oh, well this didn't, it was, this wasn't in here or that doesn't apply to us. And all of a sudden now you've got a format. Again, what we're talking about is getting that process started, which the first step is always the hardest in everything we do. This mm. gives you the ability to go, not just get the first step done, but get about the first 10 or 12 steps done down the path of where you really want to go. God, I got to, yeah, now, now I'm very, I I'm a checklist. <laughs> I got checklists for everything. I haven't Andrew's, even thought about that. Andrew's favorite word yeah. in the dictionary is checklist. So <laughs> I, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a game changer, but that is huge yes. though, from a, from a checklist standpoint. Um, Write a Valentine's um, for my love that loves checklists. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Boom. Oh, Love man. language. You know, Don't get, yes. yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is With seven suggestions of video creators on YouTube that he would love to watch. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, it's a wrap. You go. It's I done. Mean, That's a wrap. Yes. You're welcome. You yeah. Know? I mean, let's go. <laughs> well, that's huge. And, and no, I love that. And, uh, you know, from an email template standpoint too, I was messing around with it and, uh, I was, I think I was wanting to get birthdays for my, for a handful of past clients that I hadn't updated, uh, in my CRM. And I asked chat GPT, I said, Hey, I'm a, I'm a, and I was very specific. I think that's, yeah. I think it that's is. an important part of it. The more specific you are, right. The, the, the more, the better the response is going to be. Right. Right. Yeah. So I yeah. asked it, I told him what I did for a living. I said exactly what I was doing. You know, I took a little bit of time to just break down this, the situation. I said, make a funny email, lighthearted, you know, that I can send out to my, to my sphere and ask them what their birthday is. And it, it was, it was great. I can't remember exactly what it was, but, um, perfect. just fit perfect copy and paste it, you know, and it was just right. an easy touch to all my clients to get responses too. Yeah. That's the other thing. If you're doing this and you get it back and you're like, that's a little too generic, just say, yeah. make this more, you know, right below it, yep. make this more focused on Denver, Colorado, make this more focused on whatever. Um, and it, it'll absolutely do those things for you. It's only limited by the input. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. By the, you know, the only people that have said, oh, this thing is not that good are the people that are like, give me a blog post. And it's mm -hmm. like, True. you know what I mean? If yeah. you get the more specific you give it, just like if I'm talking to you guys, mm -hmm. if I just say, hey, give me a blog post, y'all are gonna be like, this, what are you talking about? You know, <laughs> yeah. and, and, but if I say, hey, listen, could you guys help me? write a blog post about the five best restaurants for date night in Santa Rosa beach, Florida, all of a sudden it's going to pull that up, which we did because listen, some of the content that agents should be doing is not always focused on real estate. You yeah. know, we, we're, mm -hmm. we're selling a lifestyle, you know? So yeah. from that standpoint, when we did those, literally every one of the restaurants that pulled up were the ones I would have said myself. And I've mm -hmm. got this thousand word blog post. And then I'm like, make that 800 words. Boom. It's done. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, this is, it's, we're, we're just literally, and we're just getting started with this y'all. This is what's scary. This is, I mean, how does this end? That's kind of scary, but, um, you know, but this thing, <laughs> I mean, they just are like, that. these people are idiots and they just kill us all. I don't know, but, um, but, <laughs> yeah, but it's right. pretty amazing. And here's the other thing is, um, as an agent, if you're wanting to grow your business, the ability to adapt to the change of the market mm. is critical. If you're wondering what is it right now? It's chat GPT. So if you're mm -hmm. not using it right now, you're missing out on the opportunity. And those that are still coming into this thing, this thing's not even six months old. So the mm -hmm. people that are four months old, the people that are coming in right now and utilizing this are so far ahead of everybody else that they won't be able to catch them if they continuously continue to evolve with this thing. Mm -hmm. Man, great point. I, I think you bring up a great point. And I, it's always like this, right? Like there's new 
tools that we can implement in our business that makes us better at our business. And, and this is just an example of one of those. But I, I do think that this, this might be like the first thing that I've seen where oh, yeah. I can't even, I, I can't even like, wrap, like you said, wrap my head around the impacts on business or the impacts on time that this is just like opened up such an interesting, you know, experience for us, like yeah. in our work. And, um, I do think that it will be incredibly impactful for the people that like jump, like you got it. What's that Jim Rohn quote? When's the best time to plant a tree? 30 years yeah. ago. When's the next yeah. best time mm -hmm. today? today like, yeah. Jump mm -hmm. on it today. You got to do yeah. it, you know? Yeah. Um, so how, and I'm assuming just based on the amount of social media content that, that you do, that you probably have some pretty tight systems around creating social media yeah. posts and all that. How have mm -hmm you know, one, what are some of the systems and structures that you use to have consistent social media on, you know, all those different right. platforms, but two, then how do you, how do you use chat GPT to kind of improve those systems? Yeah. And, and uh, I will say this, and I, I'm, I'm just getting to a point where I'm utilizing chat GPT on my social media. I, I'm kind of, uh, you know, a little bit different because I've been doing it so long that I've already got my own system. But I will tell you how I want to tell you what my system is and how if I were starting now, what I would do if that's OK. OK, Love so it. my yeah, system is, is that I shoot I shoot two long form videos per week and mine is focused towards agents. If I were back selling, mine would be focused on community activities driven, interviewing chair, local charities and business owners and highlighting uh, properties. We're seeing dramatic results in those areas. Now, if that's the case um, and I'm an agent that's starting this out. And I'm just starting from scratch. I'm going to say chat GPT. I'm going to go in there and I'm simply going to say, give me video content ideas for a real estate agent in Santa Rosa Beach, Florida. And then I'm going to take that list and I'm going to expand on that list. It may say interview restaurant owners. I want to say, OK, who are the who are the three restaurant owners that I know that I love their place that I can put on? Because by putting them on, it's going to feed back to me. And then I'm going to say and then maybe it comes back and it says, um, do a highlight video of a local house. Then I'm going to expand personally and I'm going to say, okay, what is the house that I can tell a story about? This is me adding to that, what it says, that will tell a story in a way that will draw people's attention. So, you know, is this a historic house? Is this a house that somebody famous owned? Is this a house that um, is the smallest house or the largest house in this area or the highest price or the lowest price? Whatever it is, I'm going to get the story on those things. You see what I'm saying? Well, I'm expanding yeah. on that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going to actually shoot the video. Now, once I got the video shot, this is my personal. I'm going to tell you my personal, then I'm going to come back to an agent. Okay. For me personally, what I do is, is I've shot the two videos. They're edited. Um, and then I, I take and I rip the audio and I do the real estate sales podcast. So okay. I have the audio goes because listen, some people listen to stuff. Some people watch stuff. Yeah. Some yeah. people read stuff. So understanding that I want to be, it's the old platinum rule. I want to treat other people the way they want to be treated. I've already got the content done in the video. In reality, it's just ripping the audio and loading it up. Mm -hmm. I've hired somebody personally to do that. You can do it yourself. Nowadays, it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. um, literally, hey, chat GPT, how do I load? How do I start a <laughs> podcast um, on there Apple iTunes? Go. And it tells mm -hmm. you. You know, step by step, yeah. you know, um, so those are all the things that you can do now that is different. Um, and then what I do is, is on Sunday afternoons, I take one of those two articles or one of those two videos and I write it into an article and I have a weekly column in Inman News. Um, so that's the way I do this content. If I were an agent, let me go through the process and I'm going to use chat. We just talked about getting the ideas. Now that I have mm -hmm. the ideas, I'm going to shoot the content um, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to say, Take this script because you can just take the, you know, you can go in now and go in and take the audio and turn it into written word. word take yeah. this and make this into a, uh, a, a real estate or a, a short or a reel or a TikTok or, or YouTube short. So I'm going to take that content. Y'all do this where you take yeah. the long form content. And I'm going to reduce it down to something that is consumable the way people want to receive it in a shorter form that then is going to point them to the longer form. Yeah. Then I'm going to take, and I'm going to take, and I'm going to go into LinkedIn, and I'm going to take that audio that I had, and I'm going to drop it in, and I'm going to say, make this a LinkedIn post that is 1,200 words. And it will then take that, what I had, and turn it into a LinkedIn post. And if that's a highlight of a restaurant, then I'm going to tag that restaurant on that LinkedIn post. If it's that I'm highlighting a property, I'm going to leave a link in there to 
find it for additional photos and details, I'm going to drive them to my website where I can capture that lead. If it's something that I'm just highlighting something maybe in the community or it's a, a business, I'm going to tag them where obviously they're going to probably share that. It's going to help grow that stuff. Um, it's all of these different things that you can do now and having the ability to have that editing available that literally has taken me so long to get my process in place. Now it can be done. You can do it yourself in no time. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what I would do. I mean, listen, we, we know, I mean, the best thing that we can be doing, if you're not on social media now and you're not building a brand right now on social media, you are really missing out. Yeah. It's not that anybody doesn't realize that it's, they get stuck wondering, how do I do that? Yeah. Chat yeah. GPT, go in and say, how do I get started building a following as a real estate agent, in Denver, Colorado on Instagram? And it's going to tell you. And yeah. then it's like, give me um, Instagram content ideas for a real estate agent in Denver, Colorado, that is just starting to build an audience on Instagram. I mean, all of these things you can just, as long as you ask the questions, anything that comes to mind and you're like the day, the days of us saying, I don't know how to do that is over. Gone. You, yeah. Done. There are no excuses anymore. None. If, if you say that, you're simply lazy and not doing the work. I don't mean to be getting anybody's business, but just be honest. All you have to do is go on and either look it up on Google, but especially now use chat GPT on the question or the place you get stuck and you are unstuck immediately. And now it's time mm -hmm. to take action once you got the idea. I, uh, so we have a, a six-year-old and an eight-year-old and I used to be in education. So, um, I, you know, have heard rumblings about, you know, education folks freaking out about chat GPT and we're like, no, we're going to teach our kids how to use this because yes. it, it absolutely, I mean, it is such an important tool for exactly what you just said. You could literally learn anything that you like want to. Yeah. It's not going. Anywhere. Can you imagine trying to be a college professor and assigning someone to do a, I mean, let's be no. honest. No, we don't need that anymore. I'm just, uh, you know, no, reality. Really. Yeah. Yes. I mean, and, and this is coming from somebody that writes every week. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's amazing what this technology can do to revolutionize um, our efficiencies. Yeah. Jimmy, how long, you know, you talked about kind of just the initial steps, if you were going to get started on, on social media and, you know, start building out systems to, um, post consistent, uh, videos and, and such, how long did it take you to get that traction? You know, you've got a ton of subscribers now. Um, and what, what's the key to, um, to, to getting the amount of subscribers that you have? And let me say this, if somebody's getting started on social media, um, get to a place where you know that you know and you believe with a without a shadow of a doubt that this is going to work for you. Um, I think the reason why every single person that starts doing something new is going to have someone, and a lot of times someone they care about, tell them, that's dumb, why are you doing that? You've got to come from a place of understanding that you know that you know it's going to work. I'll give you my example. I kind of shared this with y'all before, but um, yeah. basically it started with me. I knew that I knew that if I did video content, because I'd done it in my real estate business, that if I did that, that I would be able to build an audience of real estate agents because I knew that I could add value to them. So I was coming from a place of, it wasn't just about me. It was, hey, how can I get back to this business that's given so much to me? And I knew that. So I started and I just recently had to look this up. I did 83 videos. Now, listen, you won't have to do this if you start now because I didn't have I didn't have ChatGPT, to be perfectly frank. I didn't have all the creators that are out there now that I learn from every day and get better at. But it took me 83 videos and 16 months to get my first 100 subscribers on YouTube. Now, let me ask you this. People that are watching, ask yourself this. If you did 80 videos and only had 98 subscribers, would you have stopped? Um, most would. Yeah. Um, yeah. The reason I didn't is because I believed and I knew that with a, out a shadow of a doubt that everyone, first off, you want to see something hilarious. You know, people always say, oh, I'm no good on video. I'm not like you, Jimmy. Go look at video number three. <laughs> I yes. I, I, I'm Jimmy, telling that's you. Such, that's such yeah. an important point, though, because I think people don't do it because they are af they're afraid to look stupid. And here's the yeah. thing, like. You're, yeah. you're going to be bad at first and you right. have to be okay with it. Like the stuff that you put out is going to suck. Like, Would you have not is. gone on your first listing appointment? If I mean, looking back now, the, a fi somebody that says, I'm not going to do video because I'm not good at it. Um, 
If you think your first listing appointment as a real estate agent you went on was your best listing appointment, you are dead wrong. I mean, there's, there's nothing could be crazier, but there's okay. something about video. There's the vanity that we have. I mean, yeah. listen, I, I, I mean, look at this. And this is a perfect <laughs> example. Y'all know I came from something. This was not, um, <laughs> look at this green shirt. I'm just looking right now. My head is shining. <laughs> My glasses. I'm like, I just glanced down at this instead of at the camera. And I was like, who's the old guy in the bad green <laughs> shirt? You know what I mean? But that's the vanity we all have, right? Yeah. yeah. So you have to get past yourself and understand. The second that I got to a point, I'll tell you when it really changed for me. I had uh, been doing these videos. And I listen, there's going to be a point where you're going to be like, is, is this really worth it? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh -huh. um, yeah. Man, I put this great post out and I only got four people that liked it. One of them was my mom. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> what am I doing? You know? Um, and it wouldn't matter what I put out. She's going to like it. Um, so, <laughs> but there will be that point where you're going to ask yourself, is this worth it? And you've got to know that, you know, and that's where what I did is I had a group of people that were just a few steps ahead of me. Um, and maybe I can be that for somebody, but that's listening to this now um, that I, it took me 16 months and 83 videos to get my first hundred subscribers. And now we're clipping along less than three years later and we're adding six to 800 a month. Um, and so the thing is, is now if you went back to me on video 40 and you just said, um, wow, is this worth it? I just said, I think. Um, let me, let me be, let me be your future self speaking back to you that's starting on social media right now. Um, was it worth it? Absolutely. It was worth it. Not only was it worth it, you, the time's going to pass either way, find a way. Listen, what's great about it is the more reps you do, the more posts you make, the more you can begin to get data where you can see, okay, well, my audience loves talking about chat GPT. My mm -hmm. audience loves talking about listing presentations. My audience likes talking about, this is for me. My audience loves hearing about the best neighborhoods in Denver, Colorado. My audience loves hearing about local restaurants, whatever it is. You will begin to see these patterns where that type of content is the thing that people most respond to and feed the beast, give them what they want. You know what I mean? Give yeah. the people what they want as far as the type of content that you're producing. The other thing about video that's so great, it is a natural filter. We call them, I call them OKPs, our kind of people. I'm not supposed to do business with everybody. My energy, my <laughs> accent is going to turn some people off. That's fine. I'm not supposed to do business with them, but there's going to be certain people they're going to watch a video, a video. It, you know, what was the old saying? A picture is worth a thousand words. If that's uh -huh. the case, video is frame after frame. It's worth millions of words. Mm -hmm. So consequently, yeah. somebody's going to watch this video or watch a video and they're going to be like, that's my guy. That's my girl. Mm -hmm. That's somebody I can do business with. And literally what happens is, is it acts as a natural filter so that you don't have those clients. And we all got some that we know we aren't supposed to do business with, but we've gotten so far down the road that we're just going to try to grunt it out the rest of the way and make this closing happen. And all of a sudden your yeah. life gets better. The clientele that's coming in, you're like, wow, I'm attracting the right type of people. Yeah. And all of a sudden now your business gets better. Those folks love you. So they're going to send you more referrals. Your business continues to compound. And it's all because the first time they happen to be on YouTube looking for best neighborhoods in Denver, Colorado, they found a video and they were like, hmm, something about them. I, I connect with them. And they went and watched four other videos. That's yeah. the power of video. So I would just encourage Jeez. people, trust the process. You will get better. I will promise you, you'll get better if you do anything. And, and not only will you get better, even when you're awkward, you're going to draw the right kind of people because they're going to be like, oh, that's the way I would be. I would be yeah. a little awkward if I was doing video. You know what I mean? And it yeah. just naturally draws the right people. Um, at least that's what I did. I drew a lot of awkward people when I first started. You know, I'm just <laughs> speaking from experience. I'm just kidding. I didn't. Uh, but, <laughs> Anyway, I think you I think you just bring up two points that I think are really important just to summarize one consistency and just yes. continuing to do it and like being OK with kind of not being good at first, but consistent consistency really like grows that compound effect, right? Of like you start out here and then it's going to exponentially grow you and grow your business. And then the second piece I think is really important that you mentioned is authenticity, mm -hmm. because you I, you know, I've been a leader for a long time and, you know, you're a leader and I want to touch on that here in a second, but I think people don't necessarily understand the impact of authenticity in leadership um, and in your business that when you come across as being like authentically yourself and who you are, you do attract people that are connected to you in that way. Um, and that's really vital in growing your business. Yeah, absolutely. Consistency breeds contracts. Um, every single time, um, consistency in going out and utilizing a chat GPT to create efficiencies, 
consistency in doing video content or social media, consistency in farming, geographically farming a neighborhood, consistency always breeds contracts. Mm -hmm. And contracts, if you do them correctly and you're filtering those people and you're getting the right people, always breeds referrals. So that ultimately does breed what you're talking about, the compounding effect on your business over time. And I just don't want to, uh, we, we have this, uh, we have in Florida, uh, Publix, which is basically the supermarket here. Yep. And I've always said, I want to live by the Publix principle. I don't want to ever have to see somebody be like, whoops, and have to go down a different aisle. <laughs> right. I want to authentically yeah. be who I am, unapologetically, you know what yep. I mean? Good and yeah. bad. But I don't want anybody to ever meet me and be like, hmm, I thought he was different. You know, mm -hmm. or, hmm, I, that's not what I saw. You know what I mean? I want them to yep. know who I am so that when they meet them, I don't have to put on a show. It doesn't I have believe. to be Halloween all the time where we got to dress up and act like something. We just yep. be ourselves. And when we're ourselves, man, we're more comfortable. We're more confident. And so much easier. <laughs> draws people to yeah. us. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. It's more, it's easier. Mm -hmm. um, kind of shifting a little bit, cause I know we're, we're getting close to time. I'm interested in just a couple things around personal development and leadership. I mean, you are, you have a, a amazing job and are obviously really impactful with the people that you work with. Um, talk to me about maybe what's one of the most important lessons that you've had from being a leader or just something that sticks out for you in your mind. You can never pour out of an empty bucket. So you've got to constantly be filling yourself up. Um, and for me, that's surrounding myself with people. Um, I've always said that, um, you know, readers are leaders. I just want to be constantly finding the new things. One of the reasons why I found ChatGPT seven days into it being available is because I was surrounded by other people that were searchers. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and searchers, if you're seeking, you will find. So I just kept doing that. I surrounding myself with those folks. And what I found is, is that when I'm the best as a leader, and I'm the best version of myself to be able to help and, and serve other people is when it's coming out of an overflow that my bucket is being filled so much that out of that overflow, it's just flowing out on other people. You know what I mean? Um, yep. And so I, I would just say it ultimately it starts with you. What are you doing to make yourself a better version of who you are? What are you doing um, to grow in your knowledge in um, your ability to serve other people? Um, I, I, there does, there's not a day that go, doesn't go by that I don't consume probably two hours worth of content, you know, um, whether I'm in my car, I'm at the gym, I'm on a walk, I'm, you know, I'm in between appointments, whatever it is, I'm constantly doing that. And I'll find these things that I'll do themes. I've got this, um, this kind of thing that I've done and I've kind of teach a lot of our agents is I call it my three, two, one principle. And basically what it is, is this, if you want to become an expert or get better at something, um, watch three videos on it, listen to two podcasts on it and read one book. If you'll do that, and you could do that in one week. I mean, literally, you know, mm -hmm. nowadays, yeah. I mean, because listen, when I say read one book, I'm an audible guy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I don't yep. read as much as I listen now. So if I do those three, if I do that, and basically I do that where I'm watching three videos, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, listen to podcasts, Thursday and Friday. And then on the weekend, if I'm doing whatever, if I've got a book in, in my ear and by the time Monday comes around, the end of that week, I'm probably as smart on that one subject as 95% of the people out there. Um, so yeah. I just think it's just a constant learning process. And if you're learning, I'll promise you, um, you're going to get opportunity to lead others. Love that. Um, what does your morning routine look like? Are you a big routine guy? Yeah. Yeah. The ideal routine, you know, it's been, I've been traveling a little more recently, which breaks it up some. Um, but, but when I'm home, this is the ideal routine for me. I wake up, I'm an early riser. Um, what's fun though is man, I got the best job in the world. Literally, I sold for 25 years and now my job is just to give agents what I wish I somebody had given me. Um, yeah, so, yeah. um, so I don't, I don't, I don't have an alarm. I never set an alarm. I haven't had to in a long time. I wake up at about between four 30 and five every morning. Now listen, I don't, I don't go to bed at, midnight either. I get to bed at a decent time. Somebody told me one time, if you will go to bed one hour earlier and wake up one hour, or if you didn't wake up one hour earlier, um, you're going to eliminate the most, the least efficient hour of your day. And you're going to increase yeah. and add one of the most efficient hours of your day. And it yeah. is true. It's true. So when I first get up, listen, everybody's different for me. I'm a spiritual guy. I start spiritually. Um, one of the things that I've tried to practice is I want to start from a place of appreciation and of gratitude. So literally when I, when I get out of bed in the mornings, um, I still try to do it every single day. When my first foot hits the floor, I say, thank. And then I walk it out. You thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. And what I do then is I just, in my mind, I start making a mental note of everything I'm thankful for, for my wife, um, for my kids, for my opportunities, 
for my business, for my health, um, that I get to live at one of the most beautiful places in the world on the beach, you know, all of these different things that I'm thankful for, because then what I do is, is that just kind of sets the tone for the day. And then I'm going to do some spiritual, um, you know, my spiritual practice for me. Then I'm going to try to break a sweat every day. And then I'm going to try to listen to something that is knowledge wise has moved me forward. That may be when I'm on the treadmill getting ready to work out. That may be on the drive to the gym. It could be wherever, but I'm going to start, I'm going to hit myself spiritually, physically, and I'm also going to hit myself um, from a standpoint of mentally preparing myself. Mm. Then I try to be the first one in the, in, in the office every single day. I had this guy, came yeah. out of college, uh, went to work at Merrill Lynch as a stockbroker. Um, and literally, I just that's why I wear green shirts today. I didn't like the coat and tie. Um, but I was basically at a place where um, at 22 years old, I was the youngest broker in the state of Florida. And my mentor at that time, who made an impact on my life, second day in, he, he brings up and he hands me the, this key. And he says, uh, he said, Jimmy, you're, um, you're not going to be the smartest one here. And I was like, oh, that's kind of hurtful. But I mean, he's right. I'm 22 <laughs> years old and I'm selling financial advice. Come on. Um, but he said, you're not going to be the, the smartest one here. But he said, but this key right here is the key to that front door. If you will turn those locks in the morning and be the first one here. And at night, if you'll turn those locks and be the last one to leave, at least one of those, but preferably both of those every day, I'll promise you, you're going to be one of the top producers in this office. And to this day, when I get to the office in the mornings, I think to myself, they may not, I may not be the smartest one here, but they're not going to outwork me. And I think that mentality of by the time I get to the office, most people are just waking up. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I feel yeah. like I've got a little bit of a head start on everybody. So I think when you set your morning up, you can't win the whole day if you don't win the morning. So mm -hmm. I try to win my morning in a way that propels me into the day so that I know that I know that I've done what I needed to do to prepare myself to handle whatever it is that comes my way and that I can handle it mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally, whatever it is that I'm prepared for it. So that's kind of how I typically set up the, the morning for me. That's great. That's I think awesome. every time I don't do my morning yeah. routine, I know, and it, it never, the Feels, day never goes. No, you feel so out uh, of whack. Yeah. yeah. That's it. If you, yeah. if Jimmy, if you could only pick one book that was the most impactful book for you, for you in your life, what would it be? Um, it'd be the Bible. I'm going to skip over that though. Um, if you know, the Bible has been the most, um, how to win friends and influence people, um, was the one that has been the most influential as far as just my entire life, just to focus on, um, understanding other people, uh, realizing that it's not about you, um, finding a way to serve other people. To me, that's just the foundation of everything. And you can't fake it. I mean, no. you know, we all know we have those people we meet and, you know, and it's yep. just, you can tell it's all about them. You know what I mean? And listen, yes. I've been there when I was younger I, I, and, and literally it didn't end well for me um, when those in those times. And I just, I've now, it's not something that I think it's something that I know. I know that if I wake up and I focus on serving other people, Every single day, everything, it's the old Zig Ziglar quote, you can have everything in life that you want if you'll just help another, other people get what they want. It's absolutely true. Um, yeah. Every single time in my life that I'm focused on other people, I don't have time to worry about the things that we worry about about ourselves. And every single time I do that, it comes back way more than I put out as far as serving other people. It comes back to me. I think that's a great place to end. I do too. That was awesome. Great. Thank you so much for your time, Jimmy. Uh, where can our listeners find you? You know, probably the best place to start would be on YouTube and uh, just pull up Jimmy Burgess, J-I-M-M-Y, B-U-R-G-E-S-S. -S. Did you notice? Know, I, I, I used a few more syllables than you did say my I last did. Name. Was I perfect. wasn't going to say I, anything. I know you did. But I know. I'm gonna, I know. But I'm um, keep practicing. But yes. <laughs> Jimmy Burgess. You know, I mean, you got you to gotta really say it. But um, so, um, but if you'll go to YouTube, you can find it there. It'll have all the rest of the contact. Um, Instagram, obviously. TikTok. Facebook. All the places. I mean, literally, I think this is the thing maybe an agent can take away from this now. If somebody can't put your name in Google and find you, that's a problem. So literally, I just think um, that's what I try to do is make sure that um, that people can find me if they just go on Google. Amazing. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us and all of our listeners. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. See ya. See ya.